Hello, everyone. Give me a couple seconds here to properly tweet out everything and get everybody ready to join us. All right, I'm back. Audio okay? How's everybody doing? Uh, if you missed it, uh, Jarrett Stidham has been named Auburn's starting quarterback uh, this morning, shortly after 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Central Time, here on August 14th. I have said since the beginning that I believed Auburn would name a st starting quarterback on August 14th on Monday, and here we are. Auburn has named Jarrett Stidham is a starting quarterback on August 14th. So what does it mean? We've got four stories up already on the website. We were completely prepared for this, of course. Um, the big thing is, of course, um, now Auburn can rally around one quarterback. They don't have to sit back, act like that there's a competition, so to speak, and that uh, snaps are being split up between two quarterbacks. Now, Jarrett Stidham's the man, and they can prepare around him, prepare not only for the opener against Georgia Southern, but also prepare for week two at Clemson, um, but also uh, an opportunity for Auburn to figure out its strengths and its weaknesses uh, with uh, their quarterback and Jarrett Stidham, and what they can do and what they cannot do gives them about three weeks here, a little less than three weeks, to prepare for Georgia Southern and a little less than four weeks to prepare for Clemson with Jarrett Stidham as their quarterback. Sean White, for the meantime, goes to number two at quarterback. I haven't heard anything differently that he will be number three or, or anything along those lines behind Malik Willis, the true freshman. Of course, that could always change. We're scheduled to speak to Gus Malzahn later tonight after practice probably sometime after 6 o'clock or about 6 o'clock uh, Central Time. We'll be there, of course, streaming it live. Um, I'm expecting Jarrett Stidham to come out and speak to the media. It's possible Sean White comes out and talks too. He's just that kind of guy. He just wants to talk, uh, if anything, involving him. I don't know if that will happen, but I, I do expect Jarrett Stidham uh, to speak tonight to the media and answer some of our questions for the first time since the spring. But what is Auburn getting, Jarrett Stidham? Obviously a strong arm quarterback, a guy who can also run the ball. He was once rated the number one dual threat quarterback in the nation coming out of high school. He once committed to Texas Tech, decommitted, committed to Baylor, went to Baylor for a year, uh, started three games, played in nine, I believe, started in three as a true freshman due to an injury to Seth Russell, the starter at the time, and then broke his ankle, missed the rest of the season near the end of the, end of the year. And then, of course, the big controversy at Baylor broke out uh, involving misconduct with uh, other, uh, with the coaching staff and everything and the players. And uh, Art Browse was fired, of course. Jared Stenham asked for his release, was given his release. He spent a year um, going to a junior college, didn't even play football. He actually practiced as a scout team quarterback for a high school team in Waco, Texas. And then kind of started the recruiting process up again, even though he wasn't playing football competitively. It came down to Texas A&M and Auburn. He liked Auburn's fit. Art Bryles, the former Baylor coach, very good friends with Gus Malzahn. Certainly that had some help in that. And Stidham picked Auburn in uh, mid-December of 2016. And then he was on campus shortly after that, participating in practices for the bowl game. And the very first thing Gus Malzahn said was that he had some really good zip on the ball and they really liked what they saw. Of course, they went through the spring. There wasn't a quarterback competition because Sean White was still injured. He broke his forearm in the All-State Sugar Bowl, and he was recovering from that. And that's been the problem with Sean White. 
That's the story behind all this. Sean White has had multiple injuries, four major injuries, since he's been the starting quarterback over the last two seasons. Auburn knew they had to get some depth, but also they had to get a quarterback who could throw the ball down the field consistently. That's been a weakness of Sean White, just being able to consistently throw the ball down the field and get chunk yardage. So Jarrett Stidham is here to correct all of that. Name the starter today shortly after 11 a.m. Central Time. A big announcement, one that was inevitable, as we all kind of felt, but just didn't know when it was going to happen. I thought all along it would be August 14th, and sure enough, it happened today, the Monday after the second scrimmage of preseason camp. It was clear to everybody in the scrimmage that attended it, boosters, that Jared Stim is the best quarterback on the field. He played sparingly, and when he did play, he threw a 99-yard touchdown pass. So... Um, Jared Stidham is your starting quarterback at Auburn for the 2017 season. Um, now, what's Auburn going to do with the offensive line? Who are the starters there? Um, a lot more to settle, of course, but the big news, of course, and it's going to be the big news all throughout the week is Jared Stidham is the starting quarterback for Auburn. And, boy, fan day's coming up Saturday. Can you imagine how long Jared Stidham's autograph line is going to be? So, there you go, the recap of that. I'm going to take your questions right now, of course. We're going to do another Facebook Live later this evening after we speak to Gus Malzahn and hopefully Jared Stidham. But um, we need to get on here and discuss this news, this late-breaking news, of course. And uh, I will take your questions right now if you have any. Uh, Brandon Hammer asked, two 1,000-yard backs and receivers? That's a lot. I, I don't know. I don't know if Auburn will actually have a 1,000-yard receiver because I think they're going to spread the ball around so much to be quite honest. Will there be a 1,000-yard running back? Yes. They're not going to abandon the run this season. That is the strength, and it will always be the strength as long as Gus Malzahn is the head coach. Will Auburn win the West? Uh, I did not predict that, no. Not, that's not my belief. Twenty five hundred from Stidham Possible. Yes, very possible. Um, I don't think he'll throw for 3,000. I know a lot of people have mentioned that. <clears throat> Do I think it's the best possible option at quarterback for Auburn? Uh, absolutely. This is the best quarterback on campus. This guy was a five-star quarterback in, as, in high school, a five-star quarterback coming out of the junior college ranks. He was the only five-star player, according to the 24-7 sports rankings, in the junior college ranks coming out uh, this past season. He is the starter. He should have been the starter. He should have been named the starter after the spring, but they had to give Sean White an equal opportunity. Starting receiver lineup. I really do not know. They're mixing guys so much. We will see. Is Auburn a playoff team with Stidham at quarterback? It has a much stronger shot to be a playoff team with him at quarterback compared to the others, uh, including Sean White and Malik Willis. Brian uh, asks, where did he play junior college? He did not play in junior college. He went to a junior college in Waco, Texas, but he did not play football there. He just kind of took the year off and practiced with the high school team, actually, as their scout team quarterback to keep his arm warm and also worked with a quarterback guru uh, in Waco. Can the DBs be the best in the SEC? Uh, you know, I don't know. That's That might be a little bit of a stretch, especially considering Auburn's depth issues at safety. One player goes down, that can that can mess everything up in the back end. Keith asks, what is Jarrett Stidham's biggest weakness? Um, obviously, I have not seen him play live a lot. Um, I think his biggest weakness is just going to be he hasn't been tackled in two years. The guy hasn't been tackled since he broke his ankle in 2015 uh, at Baylor. How is he going to handle when the actual rush is coming to him? Is he going to know when to take off running? Is he going to know when to be able to release the ball? I, I think his biggest weakness right now is just that he has the inexperience of being tackled and facing live action over the last two years. Uh, Tyler wants to know, what's my opinion on Auburn winning at Clemson? I've picked Auburn to win at Clemson simply because I believe Auburn's offense will be a little bit ahead of Clemson's offense at that point in the season. I think the defenses will be on similar ground, but I think Auburn's offense will just be a tad better, and I've got Auburn beating Clemson. Um, but of course, that could change after Week One. I, I got we got to see these teams on the field, but on paper and the way I see things, that that's what I see happening. It's just Auburn's offense will be just a little bit ahead of Clemson. 
as Clemson is trying to figure out its quarterback situation, its new receivers, and all of that. Buck is more of a linebacker, can also go back in coverage. Um, do I think Arkansas is a huge trap game after LSU? It could be, but I don't see it that way. I really don't. I think Ar- I think I picked Arkansas seventh in the SEC West. I don't think they're going to be very good. He's going to be more explosive. Kyle Davis and Craig Myers. I don't know. Um, it's going to be one of those two, I believe, though, as you mentioned. And Nate Craig Myers has the upper hand right now, I believe. Do I see Petway breaking Mason's rushing record? Ask Ryan. I do not see him eclipsing 1,800 rushing yards for the simple fact that they are going to throw the ball just a little bit more, and he's going to share, share carries with on Johnson a little bit. Not 50-50, of course, but I, I just don't think they're going to rely on him and have him carrying the ball 40-plus times in you know two straight weeks or something like that as they did you know, late in the season with Trey Mason. Plus Trey Mason and able and able to get to that record, um, they, he broke it on his final run in the uh, BCS national championship. Jared Stim has the potential to be three thousand yard passer. I just don't know if he'll do it this season. Um, <clears throat> what do I think about Ole Miss? I, I really don't think of of anything about them and what's going on there. I don't really have an opinion other than. You knew that was not going to last. All right, guys, chill out. People are going, if Stidham wins the Heisman, is he one and done? Um, We've talked to people around him. This is in the past before he won the starting job, of course. And they said uh, he was a guy that wanted to be at Auburn for two years. We'll see. Why has Cowart been such a bust as Sam? Um, there were some warning flags there from the moment he was being recruited, I'm told. Yeah, and he's just not as quick as they believed he would be. Is Wilson Bell a starter on the offensive line? As of right now, it doesn't appear so, but he could be. What about the defense? What do you want to know about the defense? Specifically, I need to know what what you want to know about him. Um, biggest fall camp surprise for me, I, I probably Noah. Uh, I can't say his last name. Sorry, I don't. I don't know how to pronounce it. Noah Iggy, the receiver. He's done very well in special teams and return game, and also a receiver. I think he could very well play this season on offense, and, and in offense that has plenty of receivers already. Does Auburn have the best tandem backs in the nation? I don't know about that. It's up there in the SEC, I think. So that makes it near the top in, in the country. Daniel Thomas, backup safety, yes. Will Sean White transfer? No, I don't expect that at all. At least, you know, before the season. Uh, Sean, um, I think Sean will be here throughout the year. Am I ready to get some game day barbecue in that beard? Uh, we don't eat barbecue very much on game days. Starting quarters, who's the guy going to be left out? Of course, I think you're, you're speaking of is Jamel Dean versus Javaris Davis. I think Javaris Davis would be the guy left out, but Javaris Davis could play nickel a lot um, and also rotate in and out cornerback. So he'll be on the field just as much as Jamel Dean if that ends up being the case. Well, I just saw, well, Canella contribute. Uh, Sal will contribute. They didn't really show a lot in this past scrimmage. People were there telling me he had a, kind of a difficult time uh, getting off of man coverage, press coverage. Uh, but, again, it's just one practice. I know the coaches were wanting him to gain more weight. Um, they're, he's going to be playing more slot receiver anyway, and like he's going to be a tight end having to, you know, get off of, you know, get off of, uh, you know, linebackers and everything. So, We'll see. I think he's going to contribute. I just haven't heard a lot about him as far as in the passing game, and that might be because Auburn kept it pretty vanilla in front of all those boosters Saturday. I also think that's why Jarrett Sim didn't play much because they already had an idea what what, what they saw there. He threw that 99-yard touchdown. They were like, okay, that's enough. Will Malik Willis be the backup, asked Brian. I, I, I don't know. Uh, as of right now, no. 
Sean White's the, the backup. But if you get late in the season and Malik has progressed enough in practices and you really like him and you think his duality gives you an opportunity, maybe that's when you figure out maybe you need to play Malik Wills if Jared Stidham's hurt or something like that. Does so Auburn beat Georgia this year? Yes, I've, I've got them beating Georgia. Carlton asked about the number two quarterback. I just answered that. Any split back sets for Bubba and KJ? I don't know. That's a great question, though. We won't know until we see it, to be honest, because the coaches won't tell us that. And I haven't heard anything about split back set in practices. Also, they haven't been tackling the uh, running backs. Uh, Logan says, hey, you've got Big Cat over Paul James' latest power rankings. He elaborate on that. That is simply because he's, he did well in the last scrimmage and he got a safety. Um, Big Cat did. Um, so I, I placed him above Paul James at third. Again, these these rankings are fluid week to week. It just depends on what that person did that week. It's not an overall set of what they are at you know f- for the last year or two or whatever. It's what they did that week. Maybe I should explain that better in the uh, in the post when I do the power rankings at AuburnUndercover dot com. Like these are based off of what they did this week. Can Auburn beat Alabama? Sure, anybody could beat Alabama. I just don't know if it's going to happen this year for Auburn. I just don't know. Yeah, Big Cat's big dude. Is Prince taking the best left tackle we've had since Greg Robinson? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't like making comparisons, but from the things I've seen and heard about him, he's very good. The only concern there for the coaches is, uh, well, number one thing is just game experience. He doesn't have game experience. So he looks good in practice and scrimmages, but how will he do? when they get out there and have to uh, scrimmage. Or not scrimmage, excuse me, play a game. Got scrimmage on the mind, I'm sorry. All these riders are predicting a loss against Arkansas. Who is doing that? Who is picking Auburn to lose to Arkansas? Not me. I don't think Arkansas is going to be good this season. That would be a nice jumbo wide receiver package. I like that. That's very nice. Who do you line up in trips? Let's say Auburn lines up in trips. Who do you line up in trips? Will JF3 make an impact? They're going to set him up to to do that, yes. They're going to try their best. Yes, that, most of this is just my opinion. Unless I tell you, hey, I've got intel on this or this is what, I, what I'm what i hearing. Otherwise, yeah, uh, opinion. Can Auburn be Cle- – yes, I, I already went into that. Auburn, I've got Auburn over Clemson as it stands right now. Myers, Davis, Stove, and a Trips. I like that. Davis, Craig Myers, and Slayton. I like that too. Slayton, Myers, Davis. Love Ryan Davis. I'm glad someone brought him up. That guy, Cody Burns, says he's the guy that has not been dropping passes, and the receivers have had some issues dropping passes uh, in preseason camp, uh, which is not good. Sal, we'll see. I've yet to see Sal Canelo play on a football field on the Division One level. Any two tight end sets? You will see two, di- two tight end sets this season, yes. Win total for season, I predicted 10 wins back in April or May, and I'm sticking with it right now. Yes, I think Auburn will beat Georgia. Put glue on the gloves. I don't think they can do that. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. Is Daniel Carlson struggling? I haven't heard anything like that. I heard he hit a 50-something yarder in the scrimmage, if I believe, uh, what I, if I remember correctly. Petway, 1,600 yards. That might be stretching it. I think he's going to have more like a 1,100, 1,200-yard season. That is a little bit better, actually, than last season, even though the numbers don't show it. Best cornerback this year. It could be Jamel Dean if he stays uh, you know, healthy. But I think Carlton Davis is due to kind of like bounce back, you know. Hope Daniel's not punting. That's not the the uh, uh, plan for Auburn. It looks like Ian Shannon won the punting job in the uh, uh, scrimmage Saturday. Eleven wins. I, yeah, I don't know. I picked ten. How bad is the injury to Whitlow? Uh, Tatervius Whitlow, the freshman running back, 
he uh, has a, had a cast on his left ankle. I think he might actually still have a cast of some sort, some type of protective gear on there. He's expected to miss the opener, and as a result, as a freshman who is battling for the number three spot, I don't see him playing this year. I think he'll redshirt. Who will be Stenham's go-to guy? We'll see. That only can be told when they start getting out there on the field and playing in games. Scale of 1 to 10, how big is the JS announcement? Well, listen, I think everybody uh, assumed and knew that Jared Stenham was going to be the guy, but to finally have it settled, you know, I think for the future the fans can finally get behind someone. I'll say a nine. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I think. Any chance Iggy starts a kick returner? He could be there besides Kerryon Johnson possibly, but we haven't heard anything about him moving up that far yet. JF3 punt returning, he's not really in the rotation based off what we've been told. Any freshman impact at linebacker uh, other than Moultrie? No, not that I, I can assume. And Moultrie's been hurt, so. Yeah, that's that's what I'll ask you guys. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important was this announcement today for Jared Stem being named the quarterback? How would you rank it? One, 1 being the lowest, 10 to you being completely hyped. I want, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Cole says six. Chance that Auburn goes over 2,000 all-purpose yards. Uh, that's an interesting question. If he is the main kick returner, it could happen. Will Kyle Davis be the leading receiver? I think he'll be one of the top three. By the way, give us some hearts on here, uh, by the way. Give me some hearts for predicting... And knowing that August 14th would be the day they announced Jared Stenham as the starter. I've been saying it since late July. Give me some hearts. Give me some hearts for that. I, I was right once in my life. July or August 14th. Been saying it all along. Everybody else is like, oh, we'll see. Maybe this week. I'm going August 14th. August 14th. August 14th. And here we are. It happened. It's August 14th. Gus Malzahn named Jared Stenham the starter. It is over with. There's no question. Jared Stidham is a starter August 14th. I think we all knew he was going to be the guy. It's just a matter of when was Gus Malzahn finally going to announce something. And I said all along July or August 14th, two days after their second scrimmage. I just knew that was going to be the case, and here we are. And then Saturday I heard that it was going to be early this week, um, that it was not going to be Saturday and most likely not Sunday. Begging for love, not becoming. Well, you can leave, Jim. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't care what you think. How many wins does Gus need to keep his job? Uh you know, I don't know. I think he's gotta beat Georgia. Um but, you know, if he beats Clemson and LSU on the road, that's so um, you know, I don't know. I don't suffer fools. <laughs> you know, everybody's like, uh. I just get over it, dude. One person on this beat scoops everybody. And he sits in this chair. Damn right I'm confident. Damn right I'm arrogant. Any word on if Lindsay will be on the field for the booth? Don't know yet. We speak to Chip Lindsay Wednesday, so that'd be a good time to ask him. But they might not know yet. They usually might not know until like game week um uh that guy's ratchet <laughs> um that's funny andy um do i think gus will be here next year yes i'm predicting 10 wins i think the biggest game of the season for whether this season could be great is auburn at lsu if auburn beats lsu in the bayou for the first time in 18 years it's going to be a great season. It doesn't matter what happens in the Clemson game. Biggest game before the new Amon corner with Georgia and Alabama is going to be at LSU in October. So if 
if Auburn beats LSU at LSU, it's going to be a great season for Auburn. And I have, I have, don't have much confidence in LSU this year being a great team. I know a lot of people are kind of flip-flopping between LSU and Auburn as being the number two team in the SEC. I've got Auburn over LSU just because they're in a better situation with the quarterback. Um, yeah, that's it. Though, LSU's got the best running back in the entire SEC, I believe, with Darius Geis. I, I think that guy is the best. Uh, out of everybody, including Cameron Petway. That guy is legit. He is lightning in a bottle, man. He's going to go off on people this year. Oh, man, there's an Egyptian gun. <laughs> LSU at night, LOL. That ain't true. That's right. Florida's issues. Man, seven guys suspended, including their top receiver for Michigan. That's not good. Michigan's not going to be all that great this year, in my opinion. But that, that's tough for Florida. Have I seen a lot of our new offense? And I haven't seen much of it. I've heard about it. I've talked to people who are involved with it. Um, passing game looks much different than what they're doing. Who do I have Auburn losing to? Uh, Alabama. It may be LSU. But I'm always I'm like my mind could switch every day on that. But the one I've got is a loss is Alabama for sure. In my mind. Not not that's gonna happen, but that's my thought. Less miles to Ole Miss? Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's I don't know. Sean White just tweeted everybody. Sean White, now the backup quarterback, just tweeted all in, exclamation point, exclamation point, War Eagle. Gotta love that kid, man. He is all about Auburn. Even when he lost the starting job and he's been through two tough years as a starter. How about that? Gotta like that and hearing that um, from, from Sean White. He is sticking with it. Good for him. I'm going to retweet that. Give me one second. I just tweeted, uh, Sean White never gives up. Tough son of a gun. Yeah, he is a he's, – he's the dude. Okay, guys, maybe one or two more questions, and then I'm going to chat. I need to get back to work uh, doing some writing. On our board right now at AuburnUndercover.com, we got Ask Brandon Anything. Ask me any questions you want, as long as they're not recruiting, as I'm completely out of the loop on that. But uh, we'll talk to you, Eric Stenham, anything else you want to talk about. Um, and, uh, yeah, boards are lighting up right now with all this talk. We'll see. I like Derek Brown, too. Absolutely. My dog's barking because someone's mowing next door. How is safety looking with Jason Smith? You know, Jason Smith got some first team snaps in the scrimmage by design. Trey Matthews was not there because he's dealing with a death in the family. So that allowed Jason Smith to move up a little bit, get more time. Uh, they're still trying to figure things out there. I don't, I don't think Jason Smith is going to be a legitimate number two option at one of the safety spots this year, though. I agree, Billy. Sean White could be the best backup in the SEC. I agree with that. He's just a tough dude. Okay. I think my dog wants me to get off here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's freaking out. Maybe a package is getting delivered. I'm expecting a package today. <laughs> okay. All right. You heard it here first. I said August 14th. It is August 14th, and Jarrett Stenham was named the starter. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to toot my horn all day. I don't care. I, I'm scooping people. Yeah. <laughs>
I don't know. I'm just messing, guys. I just like it when I finally get something, you know, and it's confirmed after like three weeks of beating my head against the door. You know what I mean? Thanks for jumping on and uh, listening to me. I'm sorry about my dog barking. He's going nuts. Go to AuburnUndercover.com for full coverage. We got full reaction. We got five pieces of content up already on Sean White, Jarrett Stidham, and, of course, our man Philip Marshall, editor emeritus, already has a column up, and we've got much more coming. We speak to Gus Malz on the night. We'll be live streaming that, and, of course, we'll have stories and follow-ups from that as well. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We can't do this without you. I will see you later tonight on Facebook Live. And go to AuburnUndercover.com. I'll be there throughout the day answering questions on our message board. Sign up for a VIP subscription and get the latest scoops. We uh, posted something in the morning that Jared Sim was going to be the name of the starter before the, the announcement was made. So, for example, you would have known that if you were a VIP, start, uh, VIP subscriber. Thanks, everybody. I will see you later tonight. And Miles, I'll see you later tonight at the press conference as well. Miles is our new intern. She's doing a great job on social media and with video. Got some great things planned uh, with her uh, with video and uh, some other packages we're putting together. So anyway, thanks, everybody.